Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today I'm back at Lamb's Yacht Center in Jacksonville, Florida, working with Mike Webster from Hanson Yachts, checking out one of his latest listings. This time I'm stepping on board a 1985 Hawkins 50 Pilot House Liverboard Cruiser, and this one offers tremendous value for money, as at the time of shooting this video, she was up for sale for only $115,000. And I see this as being a boat that could appeal to a lot of people. She could be used for extensive cruising. She spent the past couple of years up in Maine. She's been over in the Bahamas and now she's back in Florida. She's capable of doing a great loop if that's the path you want to go down. She's also an ideal weekend cruiser. But for those that's looking for just a permanent floating home, she'd be ideal for that as well. She measures in at just over 50 feet in length. She's got a beam around 15 and a half feet, maximum draft of just over four feet. And with all those mass drop down, she'll just be around 17 feet air draft. And as to the hull construction, this one is not fiberglass over wood. This one has a complete Airex foam cord fiberglass construction. So she's lightweight, but she's also low maintenance. And that allows you a cruising speed somewhere around 21 knots at 2200 RPM. And I'll just see you once we step on board, but that raised pilot house, that's got tremendous visibility in a 360 degree and gives you that confidence for all your close quarter manoeuvring. But being a Huckin, she's also designed to allow you for that opportunity to do some offshore fishing. And the open aft cockpit that we have here has got plenty of space for that. You've got an extended canopy over the top, but this has also got full enclosure if you want. We've got the magma propane grill. And out here we've got a cockpit table with two seats and underneath that rug is actually the lazarette and in there you're going to find a large storage space. And that includes extra spares including a spare anchor and road. Imagine waking it up every morning and this is the view you have for your morning coffee. And as I make my way across the aft cockpit you'll see we've got the life sling man overboard recovery system and we've also got rod holders mounted into those supports for that canopy. And as I step up to the side deck, I like how accessible the boat is. Whenever you're coming along a dock or harbour wall or whatever, there's different access points, but it's very easy to get on and off this one. There's wide decks, which makes it far easier walking to the bow. Plenty of handholds to make you feel safe and secure. We've got a tender that's neatly and securely stored on the coach roof, and this obviously has a deck crane for easy launch and retrieval. But that way you don't need to worry about towing it behind and all the heartache that that can come along with. And what you don't see in the video is on top of the pilot house there's actually solar panels installed as well so that helps keep all your systems topped up especially while you're at anchor and with any boat storage space is always a premium but i want to show you a clever design that this one has where on the forward coach roof there's two large lockers and these are perfect for storing all your ropes and fenders where they're easily accessible but they're also out the way whenever they're not in use you can also lock these into place that way you can secure more valuables, but also it stops it opening up while the boat's underway. There's space on the bow, we can easily lay out here, you can turn this into a big sun pad. And again, there's handholds on either side, make you feel safe and secure. And at the bow, we've got an electric windlass. That can be operated here at the bow, but can also be operated at the helm. And if you are going to go through the lock gates, you're going to appreciate the fact that this one's got the windstrom on the windlass as well. Easy access to the anchor locker, and you can see it's a massive anchor locker. You could always store another couple of fenders in there if you wanted to. And as I pan round, I really like that low air draft, especially if you are going to be tackling something like the Great Loop. But I also think this one's got a timeless design. She might be 40 years old, but she's still going to turn heads everywhere she goes. And when you step inside, this one just screams your home. This would be an ideal liveaboard, not only $115,000, where are you going to find a two-bedroom condo anywhere close to that price? Those large windows give you great natural light. Most of them are opening as well, so you can have fresh air and ventilation. you got the saloon to starboard and the galley to port. And this galley's got everything you would ever need to prepare your favourite meals. It's also got plenty of countertop space. But you got your toaster oven, you got your microwave convection oven, Three burner stove top, but this one's also got the oven down below. You've also got a double stainless steel sink. And down below here we've got the fridge, and this has got a little ice box in it. But there's actually several options when it comes to refrigeration and freezers on board. As I make my way along the galley, you'll see we've got a number of storage drawers, cabinets, lockers, things like that. But we also have at the bottom of the steps, where we've got a freezer in here with multiple drawers. And there's another fridge up in the pilot house itself. 
and to starboard if you notice underneath all the seating that we have in the saloon there's storage drawers in here and under this floor this is where the main engine compartment is and almost all the floor lifts up to give you full access but i'll show you that later on even the steps leading up to the pilot house can be used for additional storage and once up in the pilot house this is a helm that's going to make you want to go cruising you get so much visibility from here the helm is centrally located to make it even easier. You get door access to both port and starboard straight out onto the deck. You can easily see behind you as well for backing out into the marina. You'll also notice we've got another storage box that's up on the coach roof. Plenty of space out here. You could use this as a chart table for all your navigation. As well as updating log books and things like that. And I like the fact that there's two seats at the helm. I always picture a boat like this being a husband and wife team. And I love the fact that you get to be together while you go cruising. I also like the fact that it's easy to access the seats from either side. That way you're not bumping into each other, especially when the boat's underway. And then we have the main breaker panel as well as all your controls for both your AC and your DC. There is a generator on board. And that's going to be a Northern Lights 12 kilowatt generator. And it's got just over 1200 hours on the clock. Now this boat was innovative in its design. And you're going to see a mixture of upgrades on board. Because when this was first launched back in 1985. It was actually powered by four outboards. The boat was always designed to be able to carry the larger diesel inboards. But they did have the option and innovative design to go with the outboards. But these have since been replaced. And at the helm you're going to see things like all your tank gauges. This one's got 200 gallons of fresh water, 700 gallons of fuel and 20 gallon holding tank capacity. The boat's fully air conditioned but there's also plenty of vents at the helm. To ease the close quarter manoeuvring abilities this one's got a Virus 3 kilowatt bow thruster. You've got multiple Simrad applications here. We've got the Simrad autopilot. You've also got the bottom scanner. You've got the radar, you've got a multifunction display with a GPS transceiver, and this one also has AIS. And up overhead, we've also got a large hatch that gives great light and ventilation. On a day like today when I was filmed, there was plenty of fresh air coming through. And as I make my way down to the lower accommodation, everywhere you can, there's always been storage compartments included, and that includes this passageway downstairs. The steps are easy to go down, they're not too steep, but there's also handholds in place, which obviously it's easy to do in a marina like this, but it's also going to be beneficial when the boat's underway. And once at the bottom of the steps, you're going to find a guest cabin on the bow. For being this far forward on the yacht, there's tremendous headroom. I'm six foot two and I had absolutely no issue at all in here. You've got opening portholes on the side of the hull, as well as that large hatch overhead. And it's a really good size V berth, and you can have an infill cushion in between. But sometimes when you're on the V berth, it feels very small and claustrophobic and cramped, but I can't say that with this one at all. There's storage underneath the bed in form of these drawers and lockers, but also if I lift up the mattress, you can see that there's storage under here too. We've also got different cabinets here. And again, the doors lock into place for when the boat's underway. And you get full height hanging locker space and this cedar line cabinet too. And the yacht's fully air conditioned with a total of four air conditioning units throughout. There's one in each stateroom, there's one in the main cabin and one in the pilot house. And as I make my way aft, next up we've got the guest heads compartment. This has got a vacuum flush head system. And although the forward cabin is not en suite, it's got direct access to the heads compartment itself for that extra privacy. And this one's got a separate toilet and shower compartment. And if you notice in the shower, it's also got a fiberglass molded seat that you can use. And there's plenty of room in the shower stall itself to be able to enjoy that shower. As to the main head section, there's obviously plenty of storage in here too, for all your toiletries and personal belongings. And that mirror that you see on the back slides with more storage space behind there as well. And then next up is where we're going to find the owner's stateroom as a head aft. And for a boat of this size, this is one of the largest cabins I've seen where there's so many storage options that this would easily be an ideal liveaboard cruiser. You get multiple storage drawers underneath the bed. You get more drawers either side. You got opening portholes on the side of the hull on top of the bed. And then you've got multiple hanging locker spaces in this cabin, some of which has been used for storage. 
And throughout the entire yacht, I was also impressed with how much safety apparatus there is. It seems like there's always a fire extinguisher, life sling, fire blanket, something along those lines, easily accessible. And for the main hanging locker space that we have in this cabin, it's all cedar lined. And if you notice that there's shelves off to the left hand side, this would be ideal as a shoe rack or something along those lines. And this one's illuminated as soon as you open the door. Being the owner's stateroom, this one's fully en suite. It's got a very large head compartment. And once you come in here, you'll see that there's plenty of countertop space, storage for toiletries and personal belongings, a separate toilet and shower compartment. And again, you've got the sliding mirror cabinet. It's kind of like a medicine cabinet. And this one's got one of the tallest shower compartments I've ever seen in a boat. This one's got to be at least seven foot tall when you stand in it. And since the owner's stateroom is pretty much midships, this means you're not going to have the same pitching and rolling that you would normally expect whenever you're at anchor. You're also not going to have the water lap in the back of the hull if you were in an aft cabin. So it should make for an extremely comfortable night's sleep. And then if we make our way back up to the main saloon, I'll show you the engine compartment. As I mentioned, this one was originally powered by four outboards, but the engines that's on board today were actually installed in 2009. And what we have here is a pair of Cummins. These are 6C TA8 engines. They produce around 450 horsepower each, so you're looking at 900 horsepower total. They got around 2,500 hours on the clock. And you can open up different sections of the deck here, and that way you get easy access for your day-to-day -day maintenance. Or you can lift up pretty much the entire floor if you want to perform larger projects. Regardless of how you do it, you'll see that these engines have been well maintained. And they allow you to cruise at around 21 knots. And by being Cummins, not only are they extremely reliable, but it's also easy to get both technicians and spares anywhere you want to go cruising. And this engine compartment was designed so you get easy access for all your daily checks, your oil water separators, your fuel filters, and easy to inspect the bilges itself. There's also a total of eight batteries on board between the engines, the house battery, and the generator battery. There's also one dedicated to the bow thruster. And these are easily accessible should they ever need to be replaced. I'd like to thank Mike once again for the opportunity. Come on board and check this one out. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And I'll catch you on the next one.